Hello friends, in this video we are going to see what's new coming in TensorFlow 2.0. So currently uh, Google has released TensorFlow 2.0 in alpha and over the next few months it will release, it will make the final release. So let's see what are some of the new things that are coming in TensorFlow. So mainly TensorFlow 2.0 is focused towards simplicity and ease of use. So uh, I will just uh, mention few of the important changes. So one of the changes is simplifying of APIs. And uh, this will this includes not only simplifying the APIs but cleaning up some deprecated endpoints and reducing the duplication of APIs. So like some APIs which have been removed are like tf.app tf.flags tf.logging So uh, so, so uh, we have uh, Abyssal Pi and it's uh, now open source and it supports all these APIs like uh, we can import we can import uh, this Absil it's open source Python library and it has all these three of uh, fun modules in python we write this epsil and then it's usage will really like uh, import app and we can import flags and other things so uh, to reduce uh, the these endpoints, uh, these APIs, these modules have been removed from TensorFlow because we can we get them in this open source library. And some other things are like main tf dot star namespace has been cleaned a lot so uh, so there were many functions which were not too frequently used and were lying in the main tf namespace so they have been grouped into sub packages instead of cluttering the main tensorflow namespace like some have been moved to tensorflow tf dot math package and others so and some apis have been replaced with their 2.0 equivalents so uh, we can so the APIs which have been moved to their 2.0 equivalents, we can uh, convert our existing uh, existing uh, those APIs using uh, the up upgrade script. So Google provides v2 upgrade script, and we can use directly and uh, whatever APIs which have been converted to near 2.0 equivalents, we will get those automatically converted and the way to use that is using tf upgrade 
so t in a small so tf upgrade v2 is the api and it needs in file argument in file and suppose our file is file 1 dot py and then we need to pass the out file and let's out file is file 2 dot py so this this will convert our old code and those uh, APIs which have been converted to 2.0 equivalent uh, we can use this upgrade script to upgrade that and the second main feature is eager execution so this is probably one of the most important upgrades to tensorflow 2.0 so one of the biggest changes is the eager first approach which means operations are run immediately upon calling them in immediate execution so in 1.x you might be familiar with constructing a graph and then executing pieces of graph via tf.session and then pass the function here so this was tf 1.x style of doing things so tensorflow 2.0 simplifies its usage the same great operations now much easier to understand and use eager execution is also useful just for debugging and monitoring your code as it runs as you can use the python debugger to inspect uh, objects like variables layers and gradients we are using python constructs like if for and print within our training loop so you can just execute uh, things like you execute in a python cell so it's very easy for experimentation purpose you don't need to construct the graph and then execute it so this is a great feature and another upgrade is that no more globals so 1.x relied heavily on implicitly global namespaces so whenever So whenever we call tf dot variable, it would be put in the default graph, and it would remain there even if you lost track of the Python variable pointing to it. So you could you could then recover that tf variable, but only if you knew knew the name that it had been created with. This was very difficult if you were not in the control of the variables creation as a result all sorts of mechanism has been created to attempt help users find their variables again and uh, for frameworks to find user created variables variable scopes global collections helper methods like tf some so helper methods were created like
and then optimizers implicitly computing gradients over all the train variables and so on. So in 2.0 it eliminates all these mechanisms in favor of the default mechanism. Default mechanism is keep track of your variables. If you lose track of your tf dot variable it will get garbage collected. So tf dot variable will be will be garbage collected if you lose track of those. So the requirement to track variables creates some extra work for the user, but with Keras objects the burden is minimized. So next big feature is functions instead of sessions. So like uh, we saw here we have to call tf.session.run if we want to execute something. So session.run call is almost like a function call. You specify the inputs and the function to be called and you get back a set of outputs. In 2.0 you can decorate, decorate a python function using tf.function to mark it for JIT compilation so that TensorFlow runs it as a single graph. This mechanism allows 2.0 to gain all the benefits of the graph mode performance and portability. And then it's recommended in 2.0 to use as much as Keras APIs as you can. So these are high level Keras APIs and these are very simple to learn, much more easy as compared to learning TensorFlow 1.x from scratch. So these are very intuitive, intuitive and uh, one can start learning from day one unlike TensorFlow 1.x which has a, had a steep learning curve. So 2.0 uses Keras as the core developer experience. With 2.0 you can use Keras as you know it, building your model with sequential APIs. And then using compile and fit. All these familiar tf.keras from TensorFlow work out of the box in 2.0. So these were uh, the main changes. Apart from these there are some other changes. So this was just an introductory uh, video and in the further videos we will see more about we will dive deep into TensorFlow 2.0 and see how we can uh, get started with TensorFlow 2.0 from the beginning. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the upcoming videos.